Erev Tov, great to be back with you again here. We're working on the lesson entitled Mining the Peshat from Genesis 12, verse 15. Let's turn to our practice verse. Let's try our hand at reading today. Vayeru ota sere faro. Vayhalalu ota el paro. Vatukach haisha bet paro. Let's try that again. Vayeru ota sere faro. Vayhalalu ota el paro. Vatukach haisha bet paro. One final time without using the annotation tool. Vayeru ota sere faro. Vayhalalu ota el paro. Vatukach haisha bet paro. So Pasuk and the verse. As in the previous lessons of Mining the Peshat, I'm just going to go right to the answer key. I'm going to work our way backwards from there, going one word at a time through the Pasuk or the Pasuk. And what we'll end up with, uh, we'll end up with a layout that is even more marked up than the one you're looking at right now, which is perfectly fine. And I love to annotate on the whiteboard. It just helps explain things much better. I got to start at the very beginning here. Got the word vayeru. So this is a verb which has other baggage or additives added onto the word. The first thing we see is the vav prefix to the word, and that will always mean something like and or but or then. It, it links thoughts together that occur in a biblical narrative where a story is being told. So if we separate that from the rest of the word, you'll notice that I have some letters, the yod and the vowel shurek in green boxes. Those represent a pronominal prefix and a pronominal suffix that have been added onto the word. So whenever you see the prefix yod and the shurek at the end of the word, those will always and only mean one thing, and it means they will. So it's a future action. We should say more properly it's an imperfect or incomplete action. And the vav conversive reverses the tenses. So this literally would be translated the whole word together, vayeru, and they saw, and they saw. And it's a reference to Pharaoh's men. So the verbal root, two of the three radicals are intact. The he has dropped off. We discussed that last time when we have a he in the third position. It's weak. It's a weak letter. It tends to drop out. So that's what we, we have here that can cause some problems for new students when things drop out and they didn't know that they dropped out. So you kind of have to be prepared for things to drop out. Just be ready for them. And then when they do, you won't be taken by surprise. Okay, next word is ota. That is an independent objective case pronoun. What do I mean by objective case? Receives the action of the word. So almost like an ob almost like a direct object, but it's a pronoun. So this pronoun, ota, means her. Nominative case pronoun that would be third person feminine singular would be she. So you see the difference? So if it's nominative, it stands in the place of subject. She saw. She ran. She thought. Objective case, it receives the action of the verb. They saw her. See the difference there? So ota means her. Yeah, the next word is Sarei, it's really a construct chain. When I say con construct chain, I mean there's something that is in the possessive case. Something owns something else or someone owns something else. So in this case, Sarei Faro means the princes of Pharaoh, the princes that belong to Pharaoh. Pharaoh's princes, we would say in the English language, using apostrophe S, Pharaoh's princes. So I've written in blue, a very similar word, you'd probably agree, wow, those words look very similar. There's just one difference in the second vowel. So we've got a kamate here, and here we have a tsere. The words are very different. So the word up here, this is the name of Avram's wife, Sarai. That's how you spell it. So it's sin, kamate, resh, kamate, yod. But the word in the text, Sarai, means the princes of Sar's prince, such as the expression Sar Shalom. So the Messiah is called the Prince of Peace in the book of Isaiah, Sar Shalom, Aviad Sar Shalom, Everlasting Father. 
But to get an example then in the Hebrew language, as with all languages, you can have words that seem to be spelt exactly the same or slightly the same. And in some instances, they are not the same. And so that's another thing that we've got to be ready for as we continue to learn biblical Hebrew. Okay, let's move on. This word at the end of the first line is pronounced vai halalu, vai halalu. And so that probably sounds very familiar to you. We all are well familiar, as with anyone that knows the English language, the word hallelujah is a very famous and a popular word. And not just amongst religious people, even secular people have a sense of what that means. So whenever we have a verb, we want to try to isolate the root. We actually have drills that have covered this very thing called isolating the root. And so the root of this Hebrew word that appears in the text is halal, hey, lamed, lamed, and that is the Hebrew word to praise. As with most verbs, there are things that have been added onto the root. So again, we have a vav at the beginning, meaning and. We have the same pronominal suffixes. Prefixes added to the word. We have a prefix yod. We have a shurik at the end. And remember what I said. Whenever you see that construction, it always and only means one thing, and it means they. They will do something. So in this case, they will praise. And the vav conversive, the prefix vav and the patak is a vav conversive. It reverses the tenses. And it becomes and they praised. And I've got the English right up here above the word and they praised. So who praised? The guards or the princes of Pharaoh, the ones that were responsible for meeting immigrants at the border, inspecting their goods and taking whatever they wanted to take from them and killing whoever they felt they needed to kill and letting those live who they felt they wanted to let live. So these were the individuals and they praised. Next line, we have the same independent objective case pronoun again, her. So they praised her. So they obviously saw her beauty. They spoke highly to Pharaoh of, of this particular woman who was very beautiful. Okay, moving on. El Paro. So we have Pharaoh's name that appears again, and we have an utnak indicating the halfway point and a thought for thought, breaking the Pasuk down into two separate thoughts, phrases, or clauses, we should say. So they praised Ota, they praised her, El. That's a preposition. You get prepositions that are appended onto the front end of words, like the bet and the kaf and the lamed. Those are typically used. There aren't a lot of prepositions in biblical Hebrew, but you do have some also that would appear in a hyphenated form, not really attached to the word that comes after it. And el means to. So they praised her el paro to Pharaoh. Then we have the next word, vatukach. Vatukach. So vatukach is a verb. I've indicated up here, it's the call passive or pu'al. So there's some disagreements between the scholarly community. What is this? Is it a call passive? Some grammarians would say yes, that there's actually a category of the call, a simple verb that will be in the passive sense. So you're not doing the action, you're having the action done to you. But it also has the exact same vowels as you'd find in the pu'al. It's one of the passive voice Binyanim, amongst the seven families of Hebrew verbs. So I'm not going to come down either way. The thing that is obvious, whether you call it a call passive or a pu'al, doesn't really matter. What matters is that we translate this in a passive sense. I've given you a box down below with blue letters. So the root of the word is lakach. Lakach is to take. The laman has dropped out when they added the prefix tav. This is a pronoun that's been prefixed onto the word. That particular pronoun is a bit tricky because it can mean you will do something, and that's a masculine singular you. In other cases, the same exact prefix pronoun can mean she will be taken. So it's not, so in this case, it's not you will be taken, it is she will be taken. And we have the vav there, and she was taken. Vav conversive reverses the tenses. So simple action, passive voice. Simple action is to take. When it's in the passive voice, you don't do the taken, you are being taken. So, and she was taken. Who is taken? The next word tells us, Haisha, the woman was taken. And then the last phrase tells us where she was taken. She was taken, and doesn't really have the word into or to. There's no prepositions here. She just says the woman, Beit Paul. 
So that expression literally means the house of Pharaoh. So we have to add into the English text the word into. She was taken into the house of Pharaoh. Let's run through this rough translation one more time, and then we're going to close our class today. And they saw her, princes of Pharaoh, or we would say, and the princes of Pharaoh saw her, and they praised her, and they praised her, El Paro, to Pharaoh, but to Kacha Isha, and they took the woman, Beit Paro, into the house of Pharaoh. Hopefully that was enjoyable and educational for you. We'll look forward to picking this up again, mining the Peshat, on our next lesson, Genesis 12:16. Erev Tov, Lahitra Oak. Shalom, shalom. Bye now.